I will knife you so that you live with a maximum amount of pain but still live. Welcome to the Whiskey Ball. Oh. Hey, sorry, I didn't realize you guys were there. Today's the, the top 10 budget bourbons according to whiskey lovers. Now, here's the thing, I saw the list and I pulled the whiskeys. <laughs> I'm arguing with this being a budget list. Oh, hold, hold on, because I specified this. Okay. We asked thousands of whiskey lovers around the world, mm -hmm. what are your go-to budget bourbons? And before that, there is an entirely separate poll that okay. says, what is your definition of, of budget. budget? Okay. And most people said, to them, budget means $30 or under. Okay. That's most people. Still. Now, hold on. Prices are regional, though. Yeah. Yee. In Austin, a good third of these are going to be over that. Yeah. Many enough. more. Fair enough. So, when we say budget, it means, on the whole, most people are saying they can get these for $30 or under. I like the idea of a go-to bourbon better than a budget bourbon on this list. Because so, all of these... Screw it. No, episode's over. We're not doing this episode. Daniel has a different idea. <laughs> Top Everything 10 is. budget bourbons, according to whiskey lovers. <laughs> what are we starting with? Are we going to do the list? Oh, in yeah. Order of the list. Number 10. Me? Number 10. Why did I? I mean, you need to do something here. No, it's. Pff, I, I can't. I can't carry oh my you every episode. I'm gonna, oh, my God. Which one? Okay. <laughs> Wait, which is number 10? It's going to be. One, two, three. Woodford Reserve. Woodford Reserve. Coming in at number 10, the 10th most popular budget bourbon, according to whiskey lovers. So the thing about Woodford Reserve. They're making some just classic bourbon. Yeah, I remember you and I smooth. Have, well, and some, and some because you and I have had some of the experiments. Well, they're double oaked ones. Some uh, of the experiments that Wood Woodford is doing, and some of those were. It's a good thing it's labeled experiment because it gets weird really quick. Yeah, I think we was it Woodford that we had some of their single malt they were releasing. Yeah, I don't remember if it was Woodford. No, no, no. It was Woodford Reserve brought, okay. by, brought by Mitch Weddle. That thing went weird, man. That was. Sideways. All right, the tasting notes on Woodford Reserve Distiller Select Kentucky Straight Bourbon. Distiller Select is basically meaningless. It means it's on the shelf. To me, this one is a way more barrel spicy bourbon for its age than most of the bourbons back there. Um, it's got this rich, yes. uh, dark, woody note yes. that shows up very early, spreads thin, mm -hmm. and there's not a lot of heavy, dense notes in this. To me, this is a slightly thinner bourbon. But rich, but it's it's not. Uh, it, when you say thin and rich, here's here's rich in that you get the full body of that flavor. Uh, yeah, the oak, and I'm getting a lot of cherry, a little bit of honey sweet. But it's brittle. Yeah, it doesn't. That's just, what I mean. Yeah, it, it's like a fine glass, mm. right? That you know, just tapping it the wrong way is going to shatter things. Yeah, right. I would be interested to try this with some water, but we don't have time. So number ten. Woodford Reserve. Number number nine, are you ready? Yeah. Number nine, Four Roses, small batch. Okay. Four Roses. This is one of the very first whiskeys I ever had. Coming in at number nine, the ninth most popular budget bourbon for whiskey lovers around the world. So the thing I remember about, and we'll see what it's like fresh off the heels of a Woodford. The thing I remember about Four Roses is that the sweetness is very very present. It's got a, it's got a lot going on, but if you don't want some heavy oakiness, just a really light touch with the oak. But you really love sweet whiskeys. Whenever you're drinking it neat, sweet bourbons especially, this will get you there. This is all around. Oh, it's nice. Though. All hard candied. All those caramel notes yeah. with a little bit of yeasty spice, but not barrel spice like bread spice. Yeah. Right and. and the oak that's in here, it's so nicely balanced. I don't like whiskeys that you just get so oaky and it's like you're, you're chewing on a piece of wood. Yeah, this one's not spiky. Yeah, it's just present enough that you can tell it's there, but then you just have this sweet wrapper around everything, which is nice. I really like Four Roses. Now, if you let it sit for a little bit, mm -hmm. the sweetness dissipates and you end up with a slightly sour tinge to the finish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, so, what is this? Is it a cherry sweetness? I'm getting cherry, and not it's not yeah. it's not heavy enough to be molasses, but like medicinal cherry, medicinal, right? So like you mean like out of a jar, like a loud no, like a Loudon's cough drop cherry. Oh, I see what you're going. All right, all right. It's so like more of an artificial cherry type, mm -hmm. yeah, like cherry flavoring. Yeah, there's like a slight metallic sweetness to the sweetness on this. Yeah, right on. It's not butterscotch sweet. It's slightly metallic sugar sweet. Okay, then. 
At number eight, mm -hmm. Elijah Craig. Mm. Now, Elijah Craig likes to brag that they were the first people to ever make bourbon <laughs> in Kentucky. What? And they actually have 1789 as the date that Elijah Craig was making whiskey. Yeah. Here's the thing, Michael Veach, famous bourbon historian, found a ship's log uh, passenger list that had Elijah Craig on a boat traveling to America in 1789. Okay. When he was supposedly already in Kentucky making whiskey. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All Elijah right. Craig was a Baptist pastor. Oh. Who took his flock of cult down to Kentucky because he was facing <laughs> now, hold on, hold on. Is persecution. That, like an actual cult cult? Yeah! They had a name. Right. And they, the, his followers had a name, and I can't remember what the name was. Something tribe. I don't but, know. Yeah. And <laughs> it was like 300 of them. And Elijah Craig was this pastor that preached such fiery, crazy sermons. Hellfire and brimstone. That he got essentially banned from the East area. And so they fled down to Kentucky and found their own community. Yeah. In Kentucky. That's... And he was making whiskey. Sounds like one of these situations where there's a group of people and they watch somebody so passionate and foaming at the mouth. is like, well, he's really serious. He must be right. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I, so say, this... I say that knowing nothing about the actual guy. Wow, this is this has got like a coffee cocoa note to the nose. This dark kind of rich note that the other two didn't have. The other two had spice and sweet on the nose and corn. This one has you know what I'm already in the taste here. This slight molassesy note to like a darker sugar. I'm already in the taste here. Or brown sugar. That's what it is. It's brown sugar. I'm getting a complete lack of oak. Okay. And in bourbon because it's aged in new oak. You're going to get oak more often than not, yeah. but I'm getting um, nice rounded off sweetness. I'm not getting a lot of uh, aggression. It's not spiky. It's not bitey. It's not trying to hurt me. And uh, it tastes like it's fairly low proof. It was like 47. Wow. This is surprisingly smooth for 47%. I am. I'm also getting a, I'm also getting that corn dust note in there too, though. Man, but you know what? You ever open up a fresh bag of brown sugar when you're ba like yeah. someone's baking something? Oh, brown sugar! Yeah. Now this isn't a dominant cherry sweetness for me. No, it's not. It's a darker sweetness. Yeah. And I really like that. Uh, so far, this is my preferred. I would, yeah, so far because it has enough of the antique woody note, but it's not spicy, I, spiky, and or again, weird. You say antique woody. Uh, for me, what I see as bourbon oak. Mm -hmm. It's more of like that new oak. You, you, you often yeah, I'm not like thinking a, of that. You often get like a bit I'm of thread. I'm thinking of wood. Like an aged wood furniture. So sword. if you think how the phonetics of a word would lead you to think something is, mm -hmm. oak means spicy in my head. Yeah. But wood notes are these round, rich, dark notes. Right? Yeah. Uh, I know it's a weird thing, but in my head that's how I describe it. Like a, a dark honey and molasses. Mm -hmm. The next one. All right, so this next one. Technically, based on the Michter's that they put in... Oh, this is American. Then. This is Michter's American. Now, technically, this, glass. this isn't a bourbon. Technically, this is just an American whiskey because it's aged in... Used oak. Used oak. And bourbon has to be aged in... New oak. Right. So, this is just going to be... Wait, let me check my notes. New oak. <laughs> <laughs> that research paid off. Yeah, finally. All right. So, we're at number seven, I think. Yeah. This is an American whiskey. Now, I want to tell you right now. Wait, this would be six, wouldn't it? Ten, nine, no, ten, nine, eight. Okay, got it. I got, I'm going to tell you right ah, now. It's just vanilla oh. coffee. Do, 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 do. This isn't a bourbon. No, it's totally different bourbon. And the reason why this made the list, mm -hmm. because I know... It's because you like it. <laughs> in our, well, in our community, it has made the rounds on, you know, more than just a couple of months of being the whiskey of the moment. And so there's a lot of people who artificially put this in the list, but it's damn near bourbon. Basically, is do we know if the only difference between this and actual legal definition of bourbon is that it's aged in used oak instead of new oak? I don't know what the mash bill is, okay. so I can't answer that question. All right. But it leads me oh. to believe it's a higher corn just from the nose. Man. I mean, think mellow corn, think the Balconis True Blue, and I get right. It's it's like much more like that. Vanilla for days on the nose, like a strawberry, a raspberry, and a slight cream coffee. Yes. Oh. Right, like coffee with a heavy cream in it, like a like a cafe au lait. Yeah. Like a chicory coffee. We did an episode on um, the best whiskeys for a Manhattan, or no, 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 best whiskeys for an old fashioned. 
That's and this was. came pretty far up there because it was deserty. Yeah, we'll link it up here. Oh, come on. It's on our like, other channel. See, this is what those vanilla flavored whiskeys that are coming out of Texas yeah. are trying to accomplish without any of the effort but all of the flavoring. That's just a phenomenal whiskey. I forgive our community for voting this up even though it's not technically a bourbon. Yeah. It's kind of amazing though. Coming in at number six, I believe. Henry McKenna. Bottled and Bond. Bottled and Bond. How did you know? B.I.B. Because oh. I saw Henry McKenna on there twice, and uh, I was like, what? No. Oh, one of them was the Bottled and Bond. Mm -hmm. We do have the budget. Oh, yeah. We do have the budget Henry McKenna, too, but it's not that great. I mean, it's, it's fine. No. This made it in the but budget this, list. This is no longer budget. No longer budget? I, somehow. Are there some places word, where it's budget? Word has spread about ah. this. Ah. And people are starting to mark this up to forty, fifty, sixty dollars a bottle now. So our definition to budget is like thirty when dollars in a minute. We first started this channel, yeah. you could get this for twenty-five, twenty-seven dollars sure. at specs. Really? Not anymore. Okay. Alright. Well top, this, the top ten budget ish. <laughs> yeah. Uh, alright, alright. Henry Henry uh, I remember this being a surprise. I get more vanilla on this than any bourbon except for that American oh, oh, whiskey one. Okay, yeah, the mixture is American. You cannot beat the vanilla. No, this is, you know what this is? This is carrot cake with cream cheese frosting. Mm -hmm. That's what this is. The spiciness of carrot cake, cinnamon and things like this in it, with the cream cheese frosting. Dude, you're not wrong. Mm -hmm. Carrot cake. I'm looking for the cream cheese frosting. I'm totally, I'm totally getting that carrot cake. Though. Cream cheese is in the nose. Honestly, I'm kind of digging the mixture is American, just, it, it, it holds my heart in its hands, even though it's not a bourbon. Um, I'm kind of digging that, that Evan Williams so far. That was lower Wait, on the Wait, you mean list. Elijah Craig? Yes, yes. The, the darker molasses ones. The, the Elijah Craig. I'm digging this one. I prefer this to the Elijah Craig. Really? Yeah. Okay, if I'm looking for something that's just like comfortable, rounded, Enough flavors to be interesting. Yeah, I mean, but it's but a it, close one. But it's not demanding you know your it attention. It's the contrast of vanilla chocolate shake. Like they're both great shakes, mm. right? Mm -hmm. But you know, sometimes you want vanilla, sometimes you want chocolate. To me, Elijah Craig is darker, and Henry McKenna's more vanilla y lighter. See, I'm getting brown sugar and oak on this. You're getting vanilla out of this? I'm not fine. I'm getting more vanilla. Well, comparatively. Okay. If I started with this only, maybe. But right. comparatively, I'm getting lighter notes than the things I described as the brown sugar dark notes. Yeah. Which is why the order that you consume whiskey is so important to what you're finding. Yes. We're cutting out a few moments in between tastings, but we're still drinking these too close back to back to, Way give, too close. to give perfect tasting notes. Next up, Maker's Mark. Okay. Well, we're going classic. The first... Uh, priced expensive whiskey, by the way. Right. You picked a whiskey for your budget list that says on their advertising, <laughs> and not, no joke, their advertising, right. Maker's Mark, it tastes expensive because it is. Now, it said that in the 80s. It said that in the 80s whenever all of the other whiskey distilleries were trying to become vodka because whiskey was no longer in vogue. I'm just saying. And they tried to, they were trying to set themselves apart in the market. It's like, no, 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 no. We're not trying to chase another spirit. We are confident in who we are. I'm so just saying. So it tastes expensive because it is. Now, I'm just saying. That, hold on. That, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> this was voted up the budget list. <laughs> and I think people's. Oh. This is the amazing thing about whiskey. Because the amount of money that people will spend on a bottle, mm -hmm. and then whenever you ask them, how much did you spend? It's always about 20 to 30% less than they actually spend. Yeah, what they're willing to say. <laughs> right. <laughs> because they know, God. I, I can never publicly. Generic shopping lists. Between 40 and $60. 32 right uh, there. $29.99. Got it. From Caskers. It doesn't include shipping. It counts. It counts. Okay. $29.99. Plus $10 shipping. You could, no, screw you. You walk in there. That's where they're getting. Out. No, no, no. Caskers isn't online only. That's you're, why they price it so low. Cannot wait list, Daniel. They make up their money on you're, the shipping. This is a budget ish bourbon. You shut your filthy hole. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, oh, this is oh, this is that cherry lollipop, Whoa. like an outright lick a lollipop, 
How many licks does it take to get to the middle of a Tootsie Roll? So you and no, I, owl. you and I were tricked into drinking some Makers mm -hmm. last week. Right? Yeah, we were. No, no, it was yesterday. Yesterday. In the still, in the, in the still episode. Yeah. We were trying a bunch of new make and then young young whiskeys, and he put this one in there as a as a curveball. This is way more candied cherry than I remember it being. Yes. Yeah. Is 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 the New Zealand because he shipped it from New Zealand. This is almost maraschino cherry. He shipped his Lizardo. Makers from New Zealand. Is there a possibility that they're getting like a no, sure, no, surely not. No, no, because this is not at all what I remember from no. from what we got yesterday. That's the idea. Man, this is so much more interesting on the nose than I was remembering from the Stillet small pours. Yeah, this has these weird candied lollipop kind of notes mixed with the wood and the caramel. Yeah, really light and easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's I, next? I kind of want to try that back to back next to what Stillet sent us. Because that does not taste like the same maker's mark. Wild okay. turkey. Coming in, no. Coming in at number four, the fourth most popular bourbon, budget bourbon, according to Whiskey Drinkers, is Bullet Bourbon. Bullet. Yeah. Bullet All right. Bourbon. So Bullet is one of these whiskeys. I'm not going to be able to give a fair, a fair objective review, some tasting notes on, because I have very fond memories associated with a friend. Plus, and I'm pretty sure it was in Westworld. Toasting of a, of a fallen comrade with the Bullet Bourbon. So. Yeah. They could put, you know. Now that's eucalyptus. They could put Kool Aid in here, and I would say this is a great whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> this, that's that tea wow. tree oil. Wow, coming off the makers, that is not a lot of sugar, but it's it's lively and bright and fresh. Yes, absolutely. So, uh, almost minty. It's yes, minty. Almost, I'm getting a little bit of it. Is that like a like a licorice? Mm -hmm. A little licorice in there. Yeah. Now the taste is kind of flat. The taste on this one just sort of goes. Yeah. No, it doesn't. It's not round. It doesn't go any particular direction. Even keeled. It just. It's thin. It finds a direction. It finds a level, and it's just a steady stream of honey. And there's not a tremendous amount of complexity. No, here. A slight minty fresh, but that's about it. Yeah, honey, a little bit mostly minty. in the nose. And I'm not getting a lot of oakiness to this at all. This is no, probably... I would compare this to more of the way more budget bourbons, like the actual base level Henry McKenna, this is actually, or the Heaven's Hill, or things this is like this. A forty-five percent bourbon. Mm -hmm. it, I would swear this would be a forty percent. No, they had to keep that just to get something interesting in it at all. Oh, oh. <laughs> what was number three? Meow. Okay, we got. I'm guessing it's Wild Turkey. Oh well, yes, kind of. Wild Turkey one hundred one. Yes, Wild Turkey one hundred one. Is the third most popular budget bourbon according to whiskey drinkers around the world, and the 101. How is this different? Do we know how this is different? It's proof the, difference. Proof difference. I tried to start a show without you on Saturday, but it didn't work out. What show? You know why? What show? So I tried to start a new vault uh, channel <laughs> on Facebook. Probably with, couldn't figure out how to work the platform with me and Winston right. from Balconis right. at the Balconis Distillery. Here's the problem. You know what the problem was? What? It was two beautiful men. <laughs> that you was needed, the problem. You needed the contrast. I needed the contrast. <laughs> and so that's why it didn't work. That hurts me. <laughs> because it's finally hoodie weather here, <laughs> here in Austin, Texas. I've never looked so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very stylish right uh, now. Okay. So this <laughs> on the nose. I inhaled too deeply. <laughs> Well, I was about to say, ironically, yeah. on the nose, this doesn't smell as, as high of a proof as 50.5% alcohol. No, you know what this smells like? Hmm. It smells like toast. Toast? Like really good bread as you're toasting it. I'm not getting that at all. Yeah, like, like I, I take think, a really rich, craft-made, you know, wheat bread. I think you're having a stroke. No, and put it in a toaster, and you get the smell of fresh toast and butter. Hmm? No, that's flying right by me. <sighs> Now this is a high rise. I think I'm having a stroke. <laughs> the you toast just, thing really is the mark You just got that? <laughs> this That's... is this episode. I can't. They're gonna wheel me off in a gurney and I, I'm gonna be like, what happened? They, I'm like, no, he wouldn't let me prepare. He wouldn't let me research. Hold on a second. My comment was kind of funny. The amount of delay in the reaction. <laughs> That's funny. I wasn't, I wasn't listening. I can't believe this is um, no, that's not number me. three. Yeah. There, I mean, Elijah... You're saying there's much more interesting bourbon. Yeah, I mean, this is good. 
And it's fine. And as a matter of fact, for the price, for, this is actually legitimately a budget. legitimately more of a budget whiskey. But I, I think. And I will say this though, at 50.5%, for a price point to give you that high of a proof. And this nice of a classic bourbon flavor. It's nothing crazy or extravagant or exotic. No, right? but it's got way more of a sour tang to no, the aftertaste. It does, and I think most people are probably gonna go into this doing some like ice. Maybe doing it's a It's got a bite to it. Maybe doing a cocktail with it. I think it's a bite that does it well. I think it's I think it's a very good value whiskey. I think lower down on the list we've had some more interesting whiskeys. Yes, I agree. Okay. So Eagle Rare. <laughs> Uh, we often see this in the community. This is often referenced in the comments, and uh, I think if I remember this whiskey accurately, it deserves to be high on the list. And if they're finding it for a budget price, so be. Whoa! It. This has got this super Ooh. sour green tea, like uh, pu'er, like real aged Chinese tea. This jumps out of the glass. Like a good pu'er. Is musty. You're just making up a word. Puer, no, puer puer. tea. It's a it's a classic old uh, tree tea tree okay. Chinese tea. Yeah, and it's made with little uh, little cups with the lids. Yeah. You ever seen those? Little a tea cup that has a oh, lid yeah. on it. Yeah, yeah, right. So yeah. what you do is you take the leaves mm -hmm. and uh, you pour water into it. Mm -hmm. And you steep it for thirty to sixty seconds, right? Then you pour the tea out. And then you do another steeping. With a good puer tea, you can do multiple steepings right. of a puer and each time have a totally different flavor of tea. And you get this sort of earthy, yes. musty, yes. but mixed with tea leaves. Yes. That's Eagle Rare. So I just took my first sip of the Eagle Rare. But it's, with it, candy. It's been a while since I've had it. And you say with candy, but a lot of bourbons, for people that aren't really into sweets, the sweetness of bourbon is off-putting. Yeah, but not this one. No. Have you ever had a, um, uh, uh, what's the, damn it, what's the dessert in a little ball, ice cream, mochi? Japanese, mochi. Yeah. Thank you. Couldn't think of the word. I really like it. Have you ever had the green tea mochi? I have. This is headed that direction. You've had me. that at my dad's house, actually. It's possible. Yeah. Because yeah. they get like a freezer full of stuff. Yeah. Mochi, yeah. yeah. It's a good Trader Joe's option. It's good. Mochi. Yeah. Yeah, but green tea mochi. So yep. it's, it's obviously a dessert. <gasps> green tea mochi. Yeah. And with a with a tiny thread of oak. A tiny thread of oak spice. Yeah. Yeah. Man. So it's like you're eating green tea mochi off of a wood plank. <laughs> yeah, that's, man, that's really nice. Right? If you need something can, like candy candy though, this has enough sweetness that you're gonna you're not gonna be disappointed if you're in, in a bourbon mood, but the uh, more deep, musty, earthy mm -hmm. kind of tea notes even, absolutely. So what was the number one whiskey voted by everybody as their go-to default? Let's just have me some bourbon. Well, you kind of put it right here, and as long as Chad's not in the wide shot, then we can hold the suspense a bit longer. Buffalo, Buffalo Trace. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you ready? Yeah. Now, I really like this one. Yes. I keep it at my house. Yes. It's in my budget decanter. Fine. Uh, well, let's first explain the budget decanter because at home, there's a theory that you have for people coming over. Yeah, so. They, they know you as being having a. Yeah, yeah. A, a, a so YouTube when you're known as champ. a whiskey guy, yes. when people come over to your house, they're expecting to have some whiskey, right? <laughs> But the thing is, you don't, not everybody is a whiskey appreciator. Yeah. And you don't want to pour them your $300 bottle of something or that they're even like, I guess it's good, thanks. Right. right? It's like, eh. Can I get some ice in here? No, no, no. <laughs> so I keep three decanters that are shaped totally different, mm -hmm. and all three of them have budget whiskey, hmm. but they look fancy. Yeah. <laughs> one is bourbon, one is Irish, one is scotch. Yeah. In my decanters, I've got buffalo. Mm hmm. Um, or a suitable budget bourbon, mm -hmm. uh, but Buffalo is often the one in there. Uh, in my Irish, I put Powers, yeah. which is becoming less budget these days. Fair enough. And in my Scotch, I will put a blended Scotch, hmm. like uh, Black Bull oh. or something like that. Yeah. Right. Um, right now, Buffalo is in my budget bourbon. So what I do is I pour a fancy pour for both of us whoever my guest is, and then I grab a fancy decanter and that's what I bring to the table and that's what we ref refill with. And I think Buffalo is just a damn good standalone bourbon. 
It's like the middle road between everything we've had so far. It is. Um, the word that's in my head is balanced. Yeah. It brings a little of the dark blo- the brown sugar. Yeah. It brings a little of the tea. Yeah. It brings a little of the caramel. Right. It brings a little of the wood spice. Well, hold on. And, and a little of the wood spice. If there's one thing that may be slightly unbalanced is the amount of the oak, the wood note. That seems to be particularly tamed down. It's still there. Yeah, but, but it's in the aftertaste. Yeah. So as you swallow this, that's when it spreads its wings. Yes. It's not when it sits in your mouth. Right. It's when you go, when you swallow, it yep. goes, it just kind of floods. And, and that's when an interesting thing start to happen. And we, we, we throw around the word smooth ironically because in whiskey circles, it's like, what does that even mean? For us, it means it's not going to be pokey, sharp, bitey, it's not trying to hurt you, it's just rounded off, and this yeah, is... The thing is, everybody knows what smooth means. This is particularly rounded <laughs> off. I'm, I'm annoyed that people got impatient with the word smooth, because it really does mean what it says. It and means that the spiky edges that right. are normally people expect to be present sure. in high alcohol right. have been sanded down. I'm annoyed with smooth for <laughs> a slightly different reason, and I'm sure you're on the same page with me, is I'm because sure whenever somebody is very, very new to whiskey, mm-hmm. The, the starting point for a lot of people, most people, is I don't really know what to say. They lack the language. They lack the language. They lack the experience. They and lack, they don't want to sound stupid. They lack the reference points. Yes. And it's like, well, smooth. Is it hurting me or not? Yeah. And that's as good as they can do. And that's great if that's where you're starting with. But yes. people that consider themselves whiskey snobs, kind of sewers with pinky in the air, is like, oh, if that's yeah. the best you can do, then you don't deserve to be drinking whiskey in my presence. No, screw those people. Okay, so... We have a very different vibe in our yes. community, in our channels. The if best the best whiskey is what? The whiskey you like to drink the way you like to drink it. Yes. Now, I will say this. If you're shitting on somebody for saying smooth because they're being lazy, yeah, I get it. But if you're shitting on someone for saying smooth because they are new and they're trying really hard mm-hmm. and they lack the context mm-hmm. for the depth and pattern recognition that you have, yep. then f*** you. <laughs> yeah. So these recommendations came from the Magnificent Bastards in the Whiskey Tribe. Yep. We are all about unpretentious whiskey knowledge and top shelf shenanigans. That's right. <sighs> Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.